Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you to a video where I cover and explain top 5 most spectacular moves from the 2022 Chess Olympia. Enjoy! At number 5 spot we have Gukesh with the white pieces who precisely calculated the whole line in just a few minutes till the very end. What white had in mind was fireworks and yes I mean it, he played bishop takes b4. The main idea behind the sacrifice is to switch the queen to g2 from where we could be threatening rook to g8 with deadly consequences as checkmates will be occurring. At the same time the bishop is hitting the black's queen. In the game black took the bishop, white switched to g2 but this is not the end. In fact black could play queen to e4 which threatens to exchange the queens and after we swap the queens it does not seem to be winning anymore as black has covered the g8 square twice. But here Guka showed the excellence in his calculation as he saw the move e7 coming which forces the rook to flee somewhere and after that we could execute a deflective tactic with rook to g8 takes 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 and simply promoting the pawn to enter a winning endgame. At number four spot we have this unclear position where with the black pieces play Jordan 1 Forest from the Netherlands team who came up with a fantastic idea. Rook to d4. The best part about the sacrifice is that it's not part of a combination where black wins material by force. Rather it's a strategic sacrifice. Now since black is threatening c4 twice, white accepted the sacrifice. We had e takes d4, bishop d2 and now just take a look at the complexes of weak black squares around the white's king side. Black will be able not only to attack these squares but also to place pieces on them and that is what Jordan had in mind. We had h takes g4, h takes g4, now knight f4. Look at this amazing knight on a vulnerable and weak square in the opponent's position. White grabbed the pawn on a5 and now black is 3 points down in material but in a completely winning position. Had queen d8 which is switching to the king side to a Continue pressing the white's weak dark squares, rook f to e1, threatening e5 likely, so black played bishop to e5, and after a couple of moves, black even found a way to involve the rook into the attack. Rook came to h8 square, after which even queen came to the party, and after just a few more moves, black's attack turned out to be deadly, and it was too much for white to handle the sacrifice they exchanged back. But actually the white king in this game didn't manage to escape. After a few more moves, Jordan 1 Forest found a way to victory. At this moment I would like you to pause the video and you can try finding the final combination that the Netherlands Grandmaster executed to make the Grandmaster for the white pieces resign. Yes, you're absolutely right, it's bishop takes c4 where once again using a deflective idea to try to force the white pieces flee from the f2 square, after which we can give a mate. What happened was rook takes c4, rook to d1, after queen d1, queen f2, black won the game. At number 3 spot we have this position played by Anish Giri with the white pieces where black is threatening to continue the attack on the king side with ideas like queen f6 and g4. However, Anish Giri found a very peculiar way to win the game with a fantastic move rook e6, another exchange sacrifice. This is once again a strategic sacrifice which doesn't lead to a quick combination to win material or checkmate black. Black did not want to allow white to simply double up the rooks and increase the pressure, so they took on e6, white took back, and now you could see what white is getting because of this sacrifice. First of all, we have amazingly strong and dangerous pass pawn, which is easily guardable on the 6th rank, plus a fantastic square for our knight where it's just gonna become a superman. From here, black is not able to play rook e7 because the pawn on g5 drops, so black played rook g7, white installed the knight onto the outpost, had g4 by black, white played rook to e1 and now perhaps is threatening to push the pawn and then give a dangerous check on the f6 square. For this reason black played rook to g6, we had queen f4, what a good square for the queen from where we're aiming at a lot of vulnerable squares as well as blocking the f pawn. 
And after G takes H3, we have a brilliant prophylactic move that I loved a lot by Anish, simply G3, to ensure that there are no dangers with our White's King whatsoever. After Rook to C8, White took the pawn on F5, Black saw nothing better than going into a losing endgame with Queen F8, had takes, takes, and the tsunami of white pawns started to roll the board, rook to e8, f5, and in just a few moves, black resigned, as there is no hope for black to stop this mass of the white pawns coming up the board. At number two spot, we had this position, where a player of the Lithuanian Chess Federation, Valery Kazakovsky, played a standard looking move h6. White spent entire 16 minutes calculating the move d4 as it just seems to work. After the move is played, Valeri unleashed his idea of sacrificing a full piece with knight takes e4. After white took the black's bishop, we had knight takes c3, double attacking the white's queen and bishop, queen to c2, knight takes on a2, queen takes on a2, and now we had black spawns starting rolling up the board in the center. e4 followed by d5. Now remember in this position, from material point of view, black is still down a piece. Even if we have two pawns as a compensation, that's not enough. So black is trying to continue developing the initiative with knight to b4 and looking at that outpost on the d3 square. After queen b2, we had knight to d3, then queen to d4. Now another initiative move, rook to b4. And after queen e3, Valeri played f5. How energetically? After white played knight to c2 to hit the black's rook, we had f4, and white in this position saw nothing better than sacrificing the queen for a piece and a rook. Had queen takes d3, followed by knight takes b4, and if white has time to regroup their pieces, they have chances. Therefore, black must attempt to develop the initiative and make the white's king vulnerable at any cost. That's why Valeri played f3, followed by rook takes f3, another sacrifice. And now it turned out that white's king is simply getting too weak. We have weak king as well as hanging rook on a1. White played bishop to d2, then queen takes f3. And after just a few moves in order not to get mated, black won the game by entering this winning endgame. And after a few more moves, white resigned and Valeri went on to win the game. At number one spot, rather than one move, I would like to show you a masterpiece by Magnus Carlsen. His king here with the black pieces is clearly in a lot of trouble and I think almost all of us would rather take white here in a practical game. However, the world champion beautifully repelled the attack and showed absolutely excellent defensive skills. He started with king to f7 and white played knight to f5. Imagine how ferociously white is attacking the great world champion. Even though engine would take the knight, he played knight takes e4, we had knight check on h6, capture, capture, and bishop coming to f5 to guard the knight on e4. Now, since black would love to take the piece on c5, and after bishop takes f5 attacking g6, we have rook takes d1 with a check, white played the move king to a2. Here black moved the queen closer to the king in order to help defend their king. White played bishop takes e4, bishop takes e4, and rook d to e1. Had king f6 check, stepping somewhere in a little bit more safe position according to Magnus. b3, rook to h7, conquering the h-file as the b7 rook is helping us out. Queen e3, rook takes h1, rook h1, queen d5, centralization of the queen. King to b2, rook d7, conquering the d-file. Rook h8, bishop f5, and after just a few moves, I want to show you this position, where just take a look at the black's king and tell me if it looks like there was ever an attack against black's king. Such a perfect defense where after a 10 moves that were consisting of sacrifice and lots of pieces attacking the Black's King, you could enter something as calm as this lake right now for the Black pieces. After Bishop F2, Queen to E2, White resigns, completely lost, no chances of getting Magnus King in any game, perhaps.
Thank you for watching today's video. If you enjoyed, please subscribe to my share channel. Let me know what should be my next video. You could also consider hiring me as your personal online chess coach. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.